Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to discuss proving various properties of quadrilaterals using congruency. Now, the first thing that you need background knowledge on is how to prove two triangles are congruent. And secondly, it's helpful if you know the basic properties of a rectangle, rhombus, parallelogram, and square. And by that, I mean the properties of the sides, angles, and angles created using the diagonals. Let's quickly recap the four cases for congruency. These cases can be used to prove that two triangles are congruent. The first case is side, side, side. If you have three pairs of sides equal in two triangles, it means that those two triangles will be congruent to each other. In other words, all the pairs of sides will be equal and all the pairs of angles will be equal. The second case is if you have two sides and an angle. So if this side is equal to this side, and this side is equal to this side. And there's a catch because for side angle side, the angle needs to be included between the two sides. Next, if you've got two pairs of angles and a side, and as long as these angles are in similar positions compared to where the side is, that's fine. And lastly, the last case for congruency is having a right angle, a hypotenuse, which is the side opposite the right angle, and then a side, also a pair of sides equal. So those are the four cases for congruency. Let's look at this problem together. It says a parallelogram is defined as a quadrilateral with both pairs of opposite sides parallel. Now you might have learned further information about a parallelogram. For example, you might have learned that the opposite sides are equal. But in this question, we're just going to use the definition they've given us. Then it says, prove that the opposite angles of a parallelogram are equal. Now you might have already learned that the opposite angles of a parallelogram are equal. We're going to ignore what you've learned and rather try and prove that it's true. Something's not true because your math teacher says it's true, but in geometry, things are true because they can be proved logically to be true. So let me show you how we're gonna do that. Firstly, we're going to construct a diagonal. So we're going to say construct diagonal. Now the problem here is that we don't know how to refer to my quadrilateral. So let's call my quadrilateral A, B, C, D. And remember my quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So the diagonal that I've constructed is A, C. Now if I can prove these two triangles congruence, that triangle and that triangle, then I can prove that the opposite angles are equal. D is equal to B. Let's set up my congruent proof. So we'll say in triangle ABC and triangle CDA, and I'll need three reasons to prove that the triangles are congruent. Firstly, we know that AC is common. Secondly, I know that this angle here equals to this angle here. Why? Because these two lines are parallel. So let's write that down. Angle BAC is equal to angle ACD. And my reason is alternate angles. And my parallel lines are AB is parallel to DC. Now to prove that the triangles are congruent, Either I'm going to need another side, and that would need to be A, B, and C, D, or I'm going to need another angle. Now remember, the definition of the parallelogram was just opposite sides parallel. It didn't say anything about the sides being equal. So let's rather use these two angles here. And the parallel lines here are going to be A, D, and B, C to make alternate angles. So we're going to say that angle ACB is equal to angle DAC. And my reason is the same, but my sides that are parallel are different. So therefore, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle CDA. And my reason is angle angle side. Now, if triangles are congruent, it means that they have 
exactly the same size and shape, and they'll have pairs of equal size and equal angles. So let's quickly list what I've got. I already know that those angles are equal, and these angles are equal, these sides are equal, and these angles are equal. And remember what I'm trying to prove, I'm trying to prove that opposite angles of a parallelogram are equal. So now I can say, therefore, angle D is equal to angle B. Now we just need to prove that the other pair of opposite angles are equal. Now we know that angle BAC, we said earlier, was equal to ACD. And we know that DAC was equal to um, ACB. Therefore, angle A will equal to angle C. And we could say that is from 2 and 3. Let's look at another example together. This example says a rhombus is defined as a parallelogram with all sides equal. So in this definition, we can use all of the descriptions of a parallelogram and we can use that all sides are equal so let's start off by saying all sides are equal and then let's think what do we know about a parallelogram we know the opposite sides are parallel we know the opposite sides are equal but actually all sides are equal other things we know about a parallelogram is that the diagonals bisect each other the diagonals are not necessarily equal but they do bisect each other in this case, we want to prove that the diagonals bisect the corner angle. So what we're trying to aim for is that possibly this angle and this angle are equal. So let's label our parallelogram or our rhombus. So we have used A, B, C, D. So let's use F, G, H, I. And if we're going for those two angles, let's choose triangles that have those angles in them. So triangles that would make sense would be this big triangle and this big triangle. And we definitely have enough information to prove that they're congruent. So we're going to say N triangle FGI and triangle HGI. Remember, I'm trying to prove that the two angle Gs are equal. My three reasons will be, I know that FG is equal to GH. And that's given. I know that Fi is equal to Hi. That's also given. And lastly, I know that Gi is common. Therefore, triangle FGI is congruent to triangle HGI, and my reason is side, side, side. Now remember, if triangles are congruent, all their pairs of angles and their pairs of sides are equal. So now I know that those two angle G's are equal, those two angles I's are equal, and the large angle F is equal to the large angle H. Now remember, what I'm trying to prove is I'm trying to prove that the diagonals bisect the corner angles. So therefore, I can say that FGI, the angle, not the triangle this time, is equal to IGH, or let's label it in the same orders as what I've got there. So let's say HGI, that is the same angle, and we know that FG, FIG is equal to HIG. Now I want to prove exactly the same thing with two different triangles. I'd probably use these two, and in that case, I can prove that the corner angles again are bisected. Now I'm not going to write out the whole congruency proof again because it's going to be exactly the same. So what you can do is you can say similarly, triangle, now we're looking at FGH, will be congruent to triangle FIH, and therefore angle HFG is equal to angle HFI and angle FHI is equal to F, H, G. And there you go. I've proved that the diagonals have bisected the corner angles. Now we've just proved that the diagonals bisect the corner angles. 
So I've cleaned everything off the sketch. Let's just add in that the diagonals are bisecting the corner angles. And interestingly enough, we also know that these two angles are equal because of alternate angles. And it bisects the corner angles on that side. Now, last time we used big triangles to prove that the diagonals bisected the corner angles. However, the next question asks me to prove that the diagonals bisect at 90. Now, yet again, you might know that the diagonals bisect at 90, but we're trying to prove it, and we're not going to use that fact in our proof. Now, if we're looking at the diagonals, it's not going to make sense to use big triangles. We're going to have to use slightly smaller ones. So let's rather this time go with triangles that include where the diagonals intersect or bisect. Now, we know the diagonals bisect because it's a parallelogram. So let's prove that triangle FG, and we need to label this inside intersection, so let's call that J. So we're going to say an FGJ and triangle HGJ. So since I've got the word hence here, I can use what I had before. So let's start straight out and say FGJ is equal to HG. J. And that was proved in question one. Next, we know that JG is common. And finally, we know that FG is equal to GH. We've used that one before, and that was given. Therefore, triangle FGJ is congruent to triangle HGJ. And my reason here is going to be side angle side. Now let's get back to what I'm trying to prove. I want to prove that these two angles are 90. Now I've just proved that those two angles are equal. So we know that FJG is equal to, because of my congruency, HJG. But surely, since FJG plus HJG, they lie on a straight line, so they add up to 180. And since they're equal, therefore FGJ is equal to HGJ, and that equals to 90 degrees. And there I've just proved that my diagonals bisect. The two examples we have looked at have been examples of proving things that you might already know about quadrilaterals. The point for these questions is not necessarily to find out new facts about rhombi or about parallelograms, but rather to prove things that you know already, things that you might have been told or you've experimented with, but you might never have actually proved formally. As you've seen in these examples, congruency is a strong tool to use in proving facts about certain quads. So when you're working through problems like this, what I suggest you do is firstly look at the definition of the quadrilateral that you're given at the beginning. If it just says something's a parallelogram, then you can use all the facts you know about a parallelogram. Or if you look in my first example, it's defined specifically what they meant by a parallelogram. Then you are restricted to what definition they've given you. Next, think carefully if you need to construct diagonals or which triangles you should use to prove the facts you're trying to prove. And lastly, remember with geometry, it's important to be logical. Structure your argument in a way that somebody who's reading it can follow your thinking and can understand what you're saying. The best way to familiarize yourself with these types of questions is to try a few. So I suggest you look in your textbook or look in your exercise book and try some of these questions before going on to the next section.